Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, back with another gear review. And the time has come for us to do the speed test session on the Is Technologies Radar Studio. Now, we're going to kind of do this in two stages. The first stage will be showing off the actual box itself. I'll show you around the front, that bit won't take long. And then around the back, that may take a little longer. What we're also going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when you boot this thing up. I've had a lot of people ask me questions like, so does it boot up as a radar and you have to turn that off? Or does it boot straight into Pro Tools? Is it a normal computer? Is it a PC? Can I still go online? How do I install plugins? All those sort of questions. Well, we'll answer those in the first section. What we'll then do is we'll do two versions of the speed test. Now we're going to use the normal uh, We've called it the Mac Pro speed test session, but hey, it's a Pro Tool session. It doesn't matter what we're running it on. We're then going to use this box up here. This is the Tascam US 2020 as our audio interface. It's connected up via USB 3. There are USB 3 slots on the back of the radar. So we're going to use this as our audio interface. What we'll then do is we'll do the speed test using the Is Technology Radar Adrenaline cards, and they'll be our audio interface, just to see if using the internal cards, which are not cheap, and they are part of the radar system if you choose to do have a radar system as well as effectively a radar studio system. We'll see if there's any difference between the speed using an external USB connected device and using the internal cards, which are in fact about here somewhere inside the radar. So first things first, let's get this thing going. Let's fire her up. Now, please do remember that we can't use any screen capture software to show you the boot up process because as it's booting, we can't have the screen cap stuff running. So it'll be a camera over my shoulder, I'm afraid, for that bit. But once we get into the main tests and I show you what's going on, of course, we'll have the screen cap software running. So here we are on the front panel of the radar. And this particular version has none of the extra screen, none of the extra controls or anything like that. We get the logo, we get two USB 3 slots, and we get these two, which are actually drive bays. And I can pop out the Samsung solid state drive, pop that back in there, because that's actually my media drive. And I've got another empty slot, should I want to put another one in there? Other than that, that's it, we get the power switch on the front and that's it. Now around the back is a very different story. Now a lot of these slots, a lot of these cutouts are actually for if you choose to go to a full adrenaline system, a full radar system. So up here is the main sync board and the main sync IO section for the adrenaline system. We then have two lots of digital IO. These are blanked out, they're not on this particular system. But down here with the power supply is all the stuff that is standard to the radar studio. So what have we got tucked away in this recess? We've got four USB, USB 2s. We've got our conventional mouse port or keyboard port. We've then got DVI and VGA for monitors. Four USB 3 ports. Our network port. We then have our conventional on logic board I.O. Four different outputs for audio, a microphone input, and our SPDIF I.O. over optical. Now, expansion-wise, with regards to the PC side rather than the radar side, we've actually got six available full-length PCI slots. In this case, one has been taken up with an extra graphics card. That's an empty one. We then have one of our adrenaline cards, two more empty ones, and our adrenaline sync card. These six ports here are actually our analog I.O. for the adrenaline system, or if we're running a full fat radar system. So we've got 24 ins and 24 outs over Tascam formatted D-sub. So first thing we'll do is power up, and I'm not gonna fake this. This is the absolute time it takes to boot this system up. some fan whirring, and believe it or not, the system is up and running and is live. That is impressive. And to be honest with you, 
that's it. The Radar Studio platform is now up and running. Let me talk you around what you're seeing so far. So we're in the dashboard and we can either go into full radar mode, Pro Tools, obviously we know what that does, and two items or three items that I've put here, two control panels, one for the Antelope Orion Studio and one for the Audient ID14. We also have the debut capture software, which is what we're using to screen cap, so you can now see it. Power button, it's fairly handy. And down here, we can get into basically all our Windows stuff. So by clicking on it, I can go into dashboard, into my normal files, see what's going on there. It's all fairly Windows-like. I can get online. Must change the home page to something more Pro Tools expert-like. I can add a new app to the dashboard if I want to. Here's all my available apps. I can go into settings. Again, Windows territory now. You can also see the full system spec of this machine, which is really handy. 64-bit operating system, of course. i7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM. It's a fairly well-spec machine, far from supercomputer territory, but, you know, it's pretty well-spec. We like that. It's that simple. It's just really, really straightforward. And, of course, anything we do online, such as downloading plugins, all the normal stuff, is available in our files, and we can see them and install them as usual. It's not a scary thing to worry about. You are in, effectively, a completely customized version of Windows. It might not look like Windows, it hasn't got Microsoft stickers everywhere, but trust me, this just seems to be working. So, let's boot up Pro Tools. And we'll boot up the Mac Pro Power Test. And we are in. And you can see at the moment that I'm using the Is Adrenaline ASIO driver as my audio interface. What I want to do first is switch back to use the Tascam US 2020 ASIO driver. So I've just started the US 2020 settings panel, and you can see here I've got a buffer size of 128 samples. I could take it down lower than that, but 128 seems to be fine for this test. So here we are, and we've got Pro Tools open, and you can see it's the normal power test session. 128 tracks of audio. We're not too worried about that. We know most machines will run that no problem. It's the boom end of things where things get interesting. And to be honest, I'm going to take it down to 90 instances of boom to start with. So let me show you the playback engine settings we're using. It's the US 2020 Tascam interface, uh, ASIO driver, 128 samples buffer size, and no disk cache. So let's play it back. You may hear something out of the headphones, but probably not very much. Okay, so that is 90 instances of boom. 128 channel strips and 128 D-verbs from an 8-core machine. Yeah, the clock's suffering a little bit, but playback seems to be absolutely fine. Stop that. I'm not sure how many more we're going to get, but let's try another four. Can't hurt, can it? What's the worst that can happen? Wait till those booms have all initialized. And here we go. It's 
Still playing back, believe it or not. I mean, this is a ridiculous test. No one's ever going to run that many instances of, of a plugin. And to be fair, probably no one's ever going to be running that many plugins on a session anyway. I always think this test is purely a metric by which we measure computers. It's pretty irrelevant, really. I don't think I've ever done a session with 128 plugins on it, let alone 94 instances of virtual instruments. I think in some ways it's very clever that the system is showing that it's maxed out minus 4% and yet it's still playing back. I can still hear that awful kind of groove pattern thing going on in the background. I'm not going to push it any harder. It's not going to go much further. I'm fairly happy with the results. You know, it is it is what it is. It's, it's running flat out. The system's still fairly responsive. We can still do stuff. We can still get between screens. Yes, the counter's a bit sluggish. Understatement of the day, possibly. But um, it still stops, which is absolutely fine. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to swap. I'm going to use the same session, but instead of using an external audio interface connected via USB 3, in this case, the Tascam US 2020, I'm going to swap and use the internal is Adrenaline ASIO engine. Yes, we know. Okay, we're back into Pro Tools. So let's just go back into Playback Engine. We're using the is Adrenaline ASIO IO. Uh, we're using a buffer size still of 128 samples and no disk cache. Now, the other thing I want to show you, if I go to hardware and we launch the setup, so this is the Radar Studio control panel. This is the, the Radar bit when we're using it in Pro Tools, the adrenaline side of things. So we've got the corporate page set up. You can see exactly what's going on. All our clock sources internal at the moment, which is great. Digital I.O. There's no digital I.O. in it. So I.O. and routing, everything's pretty much one-to-one. -one. Status, you can see what's installed. We're actually using the Nyquist converters. You can see what's going on with the hard drives, the internal stuff. A really, really handy page to be at. This is not a cheap option to get 24 channels of I.O. built in, but trust me, they sound beautiful. And we will come on to this in future videos when we actually start doing musical recordings rather than just this kind of speed test lark. We can go straight to the manual, which is kind of handy. And back to the meters. So, we were last at... 94. And I think we're going to get more out of this. Certainly the system seems much more responsive with 94 running. Will we get all the way up to 100? Well, we'll certainly get more than... 94, that's for sure. This seems very stable. Now, this is proving one thing to me, certainly as someone who is new to the Windows platform, not all drivers are made equal. That's not to say there's anything wrong with the Tascam ones, but I would say that the is Adrenaline ones seem to be able to impart more power. Maybe power is the wrong term in this case, but certainly... There's three more tracks, or three more booms. Yeah, let's whack this up to 100. See if we can get a hundred instances out of it. And here we go. Do 
No, won't quite handle 100. But still, there's more channels coming out of the is adrenaline side of things than there is at the Tascam side of things. Now, is that because the Tascam's external connected via USB 3? Maybe that's one for discussion later on. But certainly, it's an interesting test. Now, the cool thing is with this, you're never going to do that. We're running 128 tracks of audio with two plugins, and it's not even breaking a sweat. We put in 50, 60, 70, 80 booms. It's still not breaking a sweat. When we start to push up towards 100, then things start to get silly. But I think you'll agree that having that many channels of one plugin is silly anyway. Having that many channels of plugins is silly. But I'm definitely of the opinion, and I think I said this earlier, that not all drivers were created equal. So there you go, that is the power test running on the Is Radar Studio in workstation mode, DAW mode. Way beyond anything we're ever going to need. Uh, two plugins running on 128 tracks of audio, and then best part of 100 tracks of boom running. Ridiculous, we're never going to need it. The one thing I will say about this thing is, it has been absolutely rock solid during testing it was easy to set up it was really really quick the actual the boot up time of the machine is super fast meaning there's nothing else on there to get in the way none of the other windows kind of background clutter that's slowing us down this thing does one job and it does it really well connectivity wise everything you need is there and if it's not there already you can add it on put it in the adrenaline system Digital I.O., there's every possible configuration you're ever going to need is possible. It has to be said the adrenaline system isn't cheap, but actually pound for pound uh, for high quality audio, 24 channels of Pro Tools HD, for example, is not a cheap option either. I'm not going to talk about numbers because quite frankly, any further than four being a drummer and it's really not my strong suit. But um, it's a serious contender if you're in between machines or if you're thinking the new Mac Pro isn't for you. So we have a whole raft of videos planned with the guys from Is Technologies. We might actually get around to doing some audio recording. You never know. We'll put my HDX card in here. We'll run it alongside a Dante interface, something like my Focusrite Red 4 Pre. We're also going to do some recording using the internal option cards, if that makes sense, the adrenaline system with the Nyquist converters. Um, I'm really excited to hear how those stack up against my HDIO and the Focusrite Red 4 Pre. But for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert, and I'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.